Hello and welcome to my 3DR Solo review. Solo's been out for a few months now, there's been several software patches to fix some of the early issues, the gimbal's been released, um, so I thought it was time to do a review of the Solo now that a few of these initial um, issues have been fixed, uh, so you can see what it's really like if you uh, get one today. So, let's d dive into it. This is how your Solo uh, arrives when you order it. The packaging is fantastic. You've got to give um, 3D uh, a big thumbs up for the improvements they've made in packaging over the years. The cardboard box can be used as a case if you want, uh, but everything is really nicely packaged. Uh, small gripe for me here in New Zealand, it shipped with a US power supply, which I was pretty disappointed about. I had to um, find an adapter. Uh, but other than that, no complaints at all about the packaging. I did notice there was a little bit of moisture um, in this box. You can see it there uh, on the controller. There's a little bit of moisture around some of the controls. I don't know how that got in there, um, whether it was um, in the airplane or something like that. Um, this is the charger for the battery. Again, they shipped it with a US plug. Um, biggest disappointment with this is it's a 3.3 amp uh, charger. The solo will, the solar batteries will actually charge um, up to 5.2 amps. Uh, so you've got a two-hour wait time to charge your batteries. They could uh, probably look at bringing up a higher capacity um, charger in the future, which would be great. Uh, but we'll be looking at modding um, and making our own in, a, in another video anyway uh, to get faster charge times because two hours is pretty slow. Gimbal. Gimbal packaging, again, really good. Um, so far I haven't even needed to look at any instructions to, um, to unpack this thing. The hardest thing was figuring out how to get that piece of foam out of the gimbal. Uh, it was a nightmare, but um, other than that, really good packaging. The gimbal itself feels a little bit flimsy. It's quite lightweight and plastic, uh, but otherwise good. You get, um, get a free screwdriver, which you'll probably never use again. Um, and installing the gimbal itself is relatively straightforward. You just undo those three screws there uh, and drop the gimbal in. When you get inside, you can see that there's this really beefy HDMI cable. It's really, really beefy and stiff. Same with the control cable, really stiff. That's possibly going to cause us some vibrations later on because it'll transmit those vibrations uh, through the shell into the gimbal itself. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, screw it back up to put the gimbal back in. The actual mounting for the uh, Hero is really nice. They've done a really great job with the um, design. Um, the gimbal just, uh, the GoPro just clips in like that and the um, HDMI cable slots in. Really, really nice design. It's a little bit low to the ground as you see there, um, but uh, there are some extender legs available. Turn it on, you do through the battery, you just Flick the switch like that and your solo is alive for the first time. So, so far pretty straightforward. Um, firing it up outside, turn it on. Um, I There has been talk of uh, GPS lock issues. Mine locked within 30 seconds, got about 12 satellites so um, I was pretty pleased with that. Um, we may look at upgrading the um, GPS chip set later on to something a little bit gruntier. Um, and that will be interesting. But so far, uh, the GPS has been um, pretty impressive, actually. Um, hovering the Solo, you can see it's pretty stable in flight. It looks really nice in the air. Um, I was actually really surprised at how uh, stable it is in flight. Uh, in a hover, it's locked in pretty tight. There was a little bit of wind um, on this test flight. But um, when you lock it into a position, it just kind of sits there nicely, um, which is quite surprising. I, I was certainly surprised at it and impressed. Um, just going through a, a selfie, uh, which is one of the built-in um, automatic commands here. You can see it's come right back to me um, and really close uh, and nice, quite impressive. You can see this is the... Um, the pan buffering. So it doesn't have a controllable pan, um, it just buffers any movement in the pan axis. It's quite a nice idea. Um, so you never actually get the legs in the picture, but it means when you're panning left and right, you if you make any sharp movements, they just get buffered out, um, which uh, is a really nice idea uh, and actually works surprisingly well. Um, you can see here, this is literally um, raw footage 
from the GoPro. I've done no uh, extra processing or color correction. It's with Pro 2 tune turned on, uh, 2.76K footage. Uh, I, I'm pretty impressed, I've got to say. Uh, I was expecting there to be some vibration. I literally just threw the gimbal in. I didn't do anything fancy with the cables. I just chucked them in, didn't follow the instructions. I was expecting it to be full of uh, vibration and jello, but uh, not too bad, actually. Um, so that's uh, very pleasing. I'll certainly be looking at um, improving that later on and, and seeing how um, nice and smooth we can get the footage. But out of the box, you've got to say that um, it does what it says on the box. Uh, and for your average consumer who this is aimed at, uh, it's pretty good and more than good enough um, for most of the stuff that people would want to do. The um, built-in automatic um, smart shots they're called. This is one of them here, the selfie mode. Uh, quite nice, some of them are a little bit gimmicky but things like the orbit um, and the cable cam are really going to be useful for someone who wants to um, pull off some shots. All of this footage that I've taken here today including um, the static camera shots have just been done by myself so it just shows that you can actually um, do stuff on your own uh, without a second person operating a camera which is really good. Uh, downsides? Are there any downsides? I'm struggling actually. I'm struggling to think of anything that I'm really not liking about it. Uh, I thought that a lot of people have been complaining about the Wi-Fi range on the Solo but uh, I got out to 200 meters which really does put it um, to quite a small dot in the distance and uh, still had uh, four out of five bars. Probably will upgrade the Wi-Fi chipset in the Solo and the controller just um, to give it a little bit more reliability. Obviously here for these shots I'm out in the country so there's not a lot of Wi-Fi interference around but um, upgrading that chip is probably a good idea. It only ships with a 250 milliwatt um, Wi-Fi card in it so it's pretty uh, low cost. In terms of actually flying it, it's really nice to fly. It feels light, so it feels like you can throw it around quite a bit. Uh, and one of the things I like to do is get up really close to things. I'm not a huge fan of big wide uh, shots. I like to get in close uh, and do stuff that really um, gets you in tight. And as you can see here, the propellers actually hit this tree on the way up, so it was in real close. Um, there you go, yeah, clipped it. So um, that's that's pretty good. Uh, it feels like you can get in nice and tight to things without sort of worrying about crashing a $10,000 drone. Um, you know, it feels like if, if you are going to hit something that it's probably going to be okay. You can see here another really close shot. I'm going to fly real tight into this hedge as I go over the top of it. In fact, the legs just clip it uh, and there's no shake at all. Um, so really quite nice and landing we just hit the fly button and down she goes so all in all uh, I think it's pretty good and I would probably recommend <laughs>